As I mentioned in my last video, which I'll include a link to on the ESP32A1S, I wanted to continue playing around, but this time using the Arduino Audio Tools toolkit that I'd used earlier. So on this video, I'll be uh, integrating the ES8388 into the Arduino Audio Tools. I'll be proving uh, all that out with some simple examples using uh, Generated Stream and I2S. And then I'll be moving on to some more complex examples, uh, including streaming audio over Wi-Fi and streaming audio over Bluetooth, uh, all using the uh, Arduino Audio Tools Toolkit. So as far as setup goes, I'm using the same hardware setup I used in the last video. And again, I'll include a link to that. And in that link, there's a, there's a schematic there. Uh, in the last video, though, I was using the ESP ADF, which ha does have built-in support for the ES8388 audio codec. Uh, so I have to do something a little differently uh, for the Arduino audio tools. Now there is support in the Arduino Audio Tools library for different codecs, including the ES8388, but I wanted to use my own ES8388 code as I was more familiar with it uh, and uh, some of the bugs that I have fixed uh, in, the, uh, in the driver itself. So what I've done is I've created a simple little uh, Arduino ES8388 library. Again, I'll include a link to that on my GitHub repo and some examples that use it. Um, it has basic uh, I2S support as well as channel and volume control. So let's move now over to, uh, to uh, the code, have a look at that, and then we'll get into the examples. Okay, so here's a quick walkthrough of this ES8388 uh, Arduino library. And uh, this is the driver code that I've used before. Um, I've tried to remove any ESP32 specific uh, libraries in there. So if you'll see, I'm using the Adafruit uh, I2C library to do I2C communication. So uh, having said that, I haven't tried this on any of the, any other architecture. So I don't know if it works on anything but uh, ES, uh, ESP32. Uh, so anyway, uh, include, I'll move on now to the first simple example, and I'll show how you uh, include this, uh, this uh, library in your uh, Arduino code. Okay, so here's the uh, first simple example, and in this case, I'm just generating a sine wave at uh, 400 hertz down here and sending it out through I2S. Um, so to use the library, uh, you first have to choose um, what is the appropriate uh, input and output channel. So you can see here, uh, there's no input channels uh, used uh, at the moment in this example. It's just uh, it's just output. So uh, here's the uh, output uh, channel um, described here, uh, and it's basically sending its output to both uh, left and right on channels one and two. Um, and then later on, we'll see examples of uh, using the input here uh, in the, on the input side, you can you've got the same choice. You can either choose channel one or channel two for input. So here's the two wire setup here again using that uh, Adafruit I2C library, and there's the SDA and SCL pins, and then here's the uh, codec being initialized itself. So I begin it with the two wire instance I've just created, and then I call config using bits per sample, which in this case is 16 and then the output and input channels that I've, uh, that I've assigned above. And then this final argument here is the volume, uh, uh, the volume that uh, is used for I2S. And then moving down, you can see uh, this is the Arduino Audio Tools I2S configuration. Uh, so there's a couple of important things here, passing sample rate, which happens to be uh, 44100. Uh, bits per sample 16, two channels, standard I2S format. And then these are the, the same pins that we used in the last example for uh, word select, bit clock, uh, data, uh, data out and data in. Um, and then finally using master clock uh, zero. Uh, and then uh, the final call is to uh, kick off the sine wave generator. So as I said at 400 hertz, I've actually got this running. So uh, let's turn that up so you can hear it. So there's that 400 hertz tone, and to prove I'm not lying, let's uh, go to a 2000 hertz tone, get that compiled. Let me just turn that down a bit. It's a bit annoying. Let me 
turn it right down actually. It's way too annoying. So this takes a little while to compile uh, and then it flashes to the borders as usual. And uh, let me just turn it up so you can hear that. And there's that 2000 Hertz tone. So that just kind of confirms everything set up uh, with the codec, with i2s, the pins are, are all configured right. Um, and uh, we're ready to move on to some more complex examples. Okay, in the next example, uh, we're going to be doing a signal in. So I2S in, processed in here, and then I2S out to the speaker. So I'm, I'm just generating a, uh, well, let's take that down a bit, uh, one kilohertz toned from my signal generator, and I'm only using one channel at the moment. So uh, let's have a quick look at the code, and then we'll uh, see this in action. Okay, so here's the I2S to I2S example here, and you can see it's pretty much the same as the uh, previous example, with the exception of uh, in stream in this copier instance we have I2S. This is the from, and this is the to, and then down in loop it just repeatedly calls copier to copy. Uh, everything else is pretty much the same. And, and just to note, all these examples will be in the, uh, the GitHub repo for the uh, Arduino library and the examples directory. So anyway, let's go over to the board and see this in action. Okay, so I've flashed that to the board. Let's uh, turn it up and you can see, so I'm sending a one kilohertz tone into the processor and we're getting a one kilohertz tone in the speaker. So let's just confirm that. You can see as I increase the frequency and decrease the frequency. Let me turn the other channel on. You can see the other channel processing. So now if we, let's offset it by 2 hertz. You can hear that uh, beat frequency between the two channels uh, coming out. So, so anyway, that's I2S to I2S. Now let's move on to something a little bit uh, more interesting. Uh, what we're going to do now is uh, create a stream that go that uh, creates a WAV over HTTP and then we'll hear that uh, through a browser so that's coming right up okay so in this next example uh, basically we're going to be creating a, uh, uh, a web server uh, and uh, when you hit that web server you're going to get streamed audio out of it so you can see here's the setup here of uh, the SSID and the password are just above that. I've kind of hid them, <laughs> so so you don't see them. So so anyway, uh, as you can see, the code is extremely simple. Uh, I'm creating. I'm using the sine wave generator here, uh, creating a, a sound stream that has that sine wave, and you can see the uh, um, there's the frequency there. Uh, and then I create this uh, server instance here. Um, where it uh, basically specifies the uh, input is the sine wave, the sample rate is up here, you can see 16K, and then the number of channels too. And then, so what we'll do is we'll fire that off and then we'll hit uh, the web server and we should see this tone frequency right here uh, coming out through the, uh, through the browser. So uh, let's do that and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so I've just flashed uh, this to the, uh, the ESP32. So let's bring up a browser. And uh, basically when it comes up, you will see... You can see, see that tone there coming out. So let me just turn that down a bit. So just to explain, so 10.0.0.95, that's the IP address that the ESP32 is actually running on. And this software has created a uh, socket listening on port 80. And whenever it gets a, a connect, an incoming connection, it streams uh, content type uh, audio WAV, uh, which is created in the uh, in the audio toolkit. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Uh, and if, as you can hear, the tone is quite pure. Although as we go into the I2S version, uh, that purity uh, is, is quite a bit less. So speaking of the I2S version, let's move to that uh, right now, and we can. Uh, and we can see streaming audio from my signal generator out to my browser on my uh, on my laptop. Okay, so here uh, in this version, uh, we're doing something similar to what we did in the last example, but now we're streaming audio uh, from the I2S uh, input to uh, to to the browser. So from I2S input uh, out the Wi-Fi of the ESP32. 
and then we'll be listening uh, to that audio uh, on a browser that's connected to the IP address the, uh, uh, the ESP32 is listening on. So code is very similar to, to before. We create this audio WAV server uh, with the SSID and password, and then you configure the uh, I2S input uh, in exactly the same fashion that we did in the in the earlier example and just a couple of things to note so um, if you have a look here let me just uh, scroll up a little bit uh, I haven't been able to get this working with a sample rate any greater than 16,000 um, I'm assuming that's just a limitation of um, uh, the amount of data that's being written out through the Wi-Fi um, I did try it a little higher uh, it gets a lot spottier once you get to 22K and uh, 44K uh, kilohertz sample rate didn't work at all. Uh, the other interesting thing, uh, bits per sample, uh, I haven't been able to get that to work with anything but 16. Now, I'm not sure if it's something doing, that I'm doing on my side. I know the codex supports at least 24 and I'm pretty sure it supports 32 bits, but I haven't been able to get it to work on anything but 16. Uh, so anyway, just to uh, sort of explain the example, that we're, that we're going to, I've got my signal generator generating a tone. Uh, I'm going to bring up the browser once this gets flashed and you'll see on the browser as I increase the uh, uh, the um, uh, frequency coming out of my signal generator that same uh, uh, that same tone with a bit of a delay there will, will come out of the uh, out of the out of the uh, browser. So anyway, let's uh, let's move right on to that. Okay, so just to explain the setup here, I've got the uh, signal coming in out of my uh, signal generator, one kilohertz tone, going in here, getting processed in the ESP32. But instead of going out here, it's going out over Wi-Fi as a streamed MIME type. So if I bring up my browser on the uh, on the laptop here, listening on uh, going to 10.0.0.95. You should hear that tone. And there's that tone. You can hear the some artifacts there, but let me sort of prove that it's actually receiving it. You can see as I turn that up. And you can see there's a delay there caused by the buffering in the browser. So as I turn it down. So there's about a seven or eight second delay between uh, changing the uh, frequency here and uh, it being uh, received and processed uh, in the browser there. So I think, well, let me just turn that down a little bit. So uh, actually, let me just close the browser down. So as you can see, that's a, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty cool little example. Uh, and obviously you can't, you, you not only can stream uh, sort of stuff from a signal generator, you can stream any audio signal uh, out to, uh, out via Wi-Fi through through to a browser. Now I did do this before with uh, the ESP ADF, uh, that, and I'll include a link to that video. Uh, but this is entirely using the Arduino Audio Tools uh, toolkit, um, which is a lot easier to use than the ADF. I will say that. Anyway, so let's move on now to uh, the final set of examples where we're going to do the similar processing, uh, but with Bluetooth in this case. Okay, so here's our uh, final example, which is the basic ADP sync. Um, and basically what this is doing is this sets up uh, a Bluetooth sync. So in other words, uh, this is gonna act as a receiver of audio. So uh, I will connect one of my other computers uh, to this Bluetooth device, which will appear as AG5LE which incidentally was my old call sign before NA5Y. So we should see, uh, we'll go over to the other computer. Uh, we should see uh, AG5LE as a Bluetooth device, and we should be able to set that up as an audio device. And then I'll play music from my other computer, and that will be uh, ingested uh, as Bluetooth uh, into the ESP32. And then it will be subsequently sent via I2S out through to the speakers. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get that set up and uh, uh, we'll move over to the other computer and see that in action. Okay, so here we are on the other computer and, and I'm using this computer because there's uh, something wrong with the Bluetooth on my laptop. So, so anyway, uh, let's uh, open up the Bluetooth screen. You can see there, there's AG5LE. There's that uh, 
Bluetooth device, so we will go and set that up. Uh, just confirm that it's connected. Uh, it's connected for audio, so as we play audio now, so let's pick one of these free, free pieces of music. Uh, I don't know How about this one. All right, let's move over here. And so you can see, let me pan out a little bit. So that's basically uh, coming in as Bluetooth to the uh, ESP32. It's getting processed in the ESP32 and then getting sent out here to my speakers up here. And you can, uh, and you can hear that coming out of the speakers. So anyway, that's the uh, that's the full complement of uh, of um, examples I want to uh, I want to do for this series. Uh, one of the things I did want to get to uh, is uh, actually doing an MP3 encoding, and I, I definitely want to do that as a as a follow up video. Probably, um, it did take me quite a <laughs> quite a while to get some of these working. Uh, one one of the uh, problems that I had was. Uh, uh, basically, the uh, you, if you configure uh, I2S through the o Arduino Audio tools in RX mode, there's a little bit of a bug there that causes it to not work. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna let the uh, the author of the toolkit know about that little bug, and I'm sure he'll uh, get around to fixing it very shortly. But anyway, hope you enjoyed these uh, these examples. Uh, I certainly am enjoying uh, playing around with this Arduino Audio tools toolkit. Um, it's very, uh, it's very full featured. I love all the uh, uh, the author has spent a, an incredible amount of time building a very rich toolkit. So um, de definitely, uh, uh, anything I can do to promote it is uh, is uh, is good for the hobby. Alrighty, uh, so that's all for now. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you all later.